Welcome to Thrill and Grog's Wonderful World of Beer. In this episode, I'll be reviewing Castle Lager, 5% alcohol by volume, brewed and bottled by SAB in South Africa. Now, Castle Lager was introduced in 1895 by brewmaster Charles Glass of the uh, then Castle Brewery, which uh, later merged with uh, several other breweries in South Africa to form what is now known as uh, South African Breweries that, of course, later went on to uh, merge with Miller in the United States to form SAB Miller, as we know it today. Now, uh, this is a brew that has uh, stood the test of time, as its uh, slogan suggests. It's uh, internationally acclaimed and has uh, won several awards uh, over the years. So uh, I've uh, never actually tried it before. It's uh, not that easy to come by in Australia, but uh, you will find it in areas where there's uh, you know, a large uh, South African expat community, which is a lot of you know, capital cities around Australia. And uh, generally, it's sold in uh, South African grocery stores. And uh, there's actually some weird kind of uh, liquor licensing laws uh, surrounding its sale, particularly um, here in uh, Queensland, uh, I once was uh, keen to buy a carton of uh, Castle Lager cans, but uh, they refused to sell them to me because I had to buy an equivalent amount of uh, groceries um, because of this weird liquor licensing law. So, um, yeah, there you go. I mean, I don't know, um, you know why that is. It's, to me, it's totally absurd, <laughs> but... Um, that's what I was told. So uh, anyway, enough babbling from me. I think it's uh, high time that uh, we cracked open this bottle of Castle Lager and uh, made an assessment. All right, so this is the uh, second South African brew that I've uh, reviewed. The first being, uh, you know, Carling Black Label, which um, I quite enjoyed. So uh, I'll uh, pour this out into this uh, Pilsner glass. I was getting some nice smoke there too. A nice pour there. Okay, so let's make an assessment of the appearance as we always do. Well, uh, the appearance is a very uh, clear, you know, pale golden yellow colour, um, you know, with a high you know, degree of carbonation there. Hopefully the camera's picking that up, but, uh, you know, you should be seeing a lot of uh, bubbles rushing to the top there. All right, and, uh, yeah, I mean, a uh, bright white bubbly head. Uh, that's uh, just a little over two fingers. Anyway, uh, let's go with the smell. <sighs> Nearly snorted some of that, actually. All right, well, I'm not picking up a great deal. Um, just a very faint smell of grain. Perhaps, uh, you know, some corn there as well, but uh, not much else. Um, but uh, certainly not an aroma that's offensive in any way. But uh, on that note, it is time for the most important part of the review, the taste test. So cheers to you all. Okay, well, um, up front, you know, tasting sort of, um, you know, a mild grainy flavour. I wouldn't say that it's exactly sweet and malty. It's, um, yeah, I mean, very subdued in comparison to, um, you know, uh, that sweet malty kind of flavour of most lagers. I mean, what I'm picking up mostly is the sort of bitterness in the finish. Like, it is, for a lager at least, surprisingly, um, you know, bitter and, um, you know, has a sort of uh, sourness that does linger in the palate, but more like a kind of... Uh, what would you say, like, uh, you know, soda water or mineral water? It's, um, it's kind of strange, but um, I think on that note, I do need to have another gulp. Well, it's certainly holding that taste profile. In terms of its flavour, I would probably describe it as being, you know, pretty plain, pretty mild. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's certainly no offensive flavours there. Uh, I think this is just a straight up, you know, beer that's, uh, you know, made for the masses to just, uh, you know, quench one's thirst on, uh, you know, a hot summer's day in, uh, you know, Cape Town or Johannesburg uh, or, you know, here in, uh, you know, Australia. Uh, you know, there's nothing really fancy about it. So you could say that its drinkability is going to be extremely high for that reason. 
uh, as would its session ability. Uh, you know, it's definitely something that uh, you could easily go through a carton of on a hot summer's day at a barbecue or a party. Uh, I think, uh, you know, it's definitely got its appeal. I mean, it's clearly, you know, got its market out there. I mean, uh, it's been around for, you know, quite some time. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's actually the number two selling beer in South Africa, just behind uh, Carling Black Label. Alright, so uh, what would I give it in terms of a score out of 10? Well, I uh, do, of course, need to have another gulp. Well, in summary, it's, uh, you know, nothing fancy. Uh, it certainly doesn't blow my mind in any way. But there is nothing offensive about it flavour-wise. And it's certainly, you know, a very drinkable, you know, sessionable lager. Um, so, uh, what would I give it in terms of a score out of 10, you may ask? I'd probably be inclined to give it a 6.5 out of 10. I think it's deserving of no less. Anyhow, that uh, does bring us to the end of yet another Swill and Grog beer review. So, until next time, fare thee well, all.